Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome back to Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition. Well, I have to do a few things. I gotta figure out where Mar is, um, and then I gotta go find all right, uh, Farad in, I believe, in uh, Ragpicker's Alley or whatever. Am I going the right way? So I'm in the hive. Immediately get jumped. There we go. Grab them rings. I'm gone. Wait a moment. Isn't there... There we go. That's what I was looking for. I was just looking for the, uh, the quick key. Where's the one that gave me that box? Is he in this section? I don't think he is. Maybe he's down here. I forget where he is. Maybe he's to the north of here. I'm gone. All right. Well, there's a hive thug. You gonna jump me? You look like you wanted to. I'm gone. These look like they want to. Yep. So in order to get Ignis put out, I have to advance the story, basically. No, stop it. There we go, finally. I need to turn off round end, but it's so useful. Gonna run this guy down. Oh my god, stop running, dude! Is there another one? Yeah, there is. There we go. He went down quick. And there's another one that's jumping me. Man! Almost as bad as walking down the street as, Ky uh, as uh, Kiryu. Alright. Where is the dude that I'm looking for? There's fleece. I haven't talked to them yet, have I? You see a man who is looking around the buildings with some confusion. He looks lost and is mumbling to himself. The man looks relieved. At last, I beg your indulgence, good sir. I seem to have gotten turned around in this maze of streets. He chuckles uncomfortably. I'm afraid this area of the city is somewhat... He glances around apprehensively. Unknown to me. The residents seem most unwilling to extend aid to a visitor. Could I prevail upon you to help me, perchance? Uh, certainly. What are you trying to do? I seek the house of my Aunt Marguerite. She's reported to dwell in a house close to the mortuary, but the street layout seems to have changed since my last visit. Do you know the house which I speak? Uh, I'm afraid that I've never heard of such a place. The man frowns in disappointment. I suppose it would have been too much good fortune to hope that you would know of such a place. He nods slightly in thanks. Well, I thank you for your time, good sir. It is most welcome on these streets. You're about to turn away when you suddenly have a feeling that something is amiss. Suspicious, you glance at the man again just in time to see him withdrawing his hand from your purse. You can't be sure, but you think he might have taken something from you. Bait him into pickpocketing you again. 
You gauge the man in light conversation, secretly study his movements. I'll grab his hand. You are not fast enough, he yanks his hand back before you can grab it. With a yelp, he bolts, running down the street. Alright then. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take this dude out. I think these are all for if you get like a thief in your box. Thank you very much. My bad, that was me hitting caps a lot. Oh my god, I'm getting jumped again? Did you just see me one shot that dude? That? But nah, these thugs were like, nah, it's our turn now. Yeah, I definitely have to turn the round ticker off because this is getting stupid. It'd be one thing if it was just once for the entire group, but it's not. I've dealt with Porphyrium. What's in here? Is this where I... No, Mara was in the other place. Well, there's a, a man named Nestor. What's up, my dude? You see an aging man in soiled and tattered clothes, frantically pacing in the corner. His shock of filthy white hair sticks out in every direction, and his face, encrusted with dirt and streaks of dried blood, is covered with gray stubble. Every few seconds, he stops pacing and flails around suddenly, muttering and cursing as if assaulted by some unseen foe. He does not seem to notice your approach. At the sound of your voice, the old loon whirls about to face you, his wide, staring eyes bulging in their sockets. He regards you for a brief moment, then returns to his raving. No, 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 it's not you. Hoo hoo. But soon, yes, soon, who you're talking to. The old man seems oblivious to your presence. Hoo hoo hoo, you'll come. Yes, you'll come, and old Nestor will be waiting. Are you all right? No, Nestor's face turns beet red, and his whole body shakes in protest. My fork can't leave without my fork. Hoo hoo, fork, fork, fork. Your fork. Fork, fork, fork. Can't go home without my fork. Nestor's frenzy reaches a violent crescendo. He begins hopping up and down maniacally, and then suddenly stops, lowers his head, and runs headlong into a large wooden cupboard that stands against the back wall of the flophouse. The force of the impact knocks the old man flat on his back. After a few seconds, he stands back up, a dazed expression on his face. Gone! Stolen! Can't go home without my fork. Who took your fork? Nestor stares at you for a moment, long moment, and begins rummaging through the pockets of his filthy tunic. After a few seconds, he produces what appears to be a dismembered ear. Judging by the stench and color of the ear, you'd wager that the old loon had been toting around in his pocket for some time. You have my fork, don't you? Do, don't you? Hoo hoo! He holds the ear close to speaking to it. Bring back my fork. Maybe I can help you. Wait, wait, waiting! Hoo hoo! He shakes the ear violently as he shouts into it. Until you bring it back, then I can go home. Is this the fork you speak of? Did I find a fork? I guess I found a fork. Nestor hastily snatches up the fork. My fork! My fork! Fork, fork, fork! Hoo hoo! He hops up and down excitedly, waves the fork back and forth in a labyrinth pattern above his head as if we're performing some sort of ritual. Now I can go home. Farewell, who? That's a gate key. Nestor turns to leave then as if struck by some afterthought. He turns back around and hands you a scrap of something soft and rubbery, the severed ear. Upon closer examination, you notice that there is an earring still dangling from it. Pocket the earring and discard the rotting piece Updated of flesh. Updated my journal. And he's going to go through a portal. I have reached good alignment. I'm playing a good... Uh, alignment, I guess. Well. One ear's earring. Alright, well that's a thief earring. Ooh, a ring of the traveler. Plus one to armor class. I'll take that. Yes. Sorry, just clearing up some inventory space. Alright. Well, next is the Bariar. You got anything? Alright, it's sleeping. Arlo? You see a short, balding man standing in what serves as the foyer to this ramshackle flophouse. His bushy brows are furrowed in concentration as he picks at what appear to be scabs on his large, bulbous nose. The man doesn't bother to look at you. Instead, he continues to stare cross-eyed down at his nose. Yeah, what you want. Got some questions? Well, ain't that nice, he flashes you a sarcastic yellow tooth smile. I'm sure you'll find your answer someday, but I got some business to run. So if you don't want a bed, then I suggest you pike off. All right. Uh, yeah, I got no intention of sleeping there right now. And I immediately get jumped by this thug here.
I'm gone. All right. Well, I can always go back to find the person that gave me the box later. Let's go over here for now. Rag Picker Square. Done. Bunch of collectors out here. Yellow fingers. This weasley looking fellow is skulking about the garbage in a, like a tattered shadow. Seeing you and Morte, he beckons to you. Assist. Hey, the skull. Where'd you get the skull, eh? Me skull it is. Give me a give it back to me. Morte turns to the high pike off. If you can prove to me the skull's yours, then I'll give it to you. It's only fair. He stares at you for a moment, like you're addled. It's a piking mine. Talking proof. Don't you, don't know nothing? Gives me the skull back now. This is not your skull. You're calling me a liar, eh? Skull's mine. Mine, he mumbles for a moment, eyes rolling and darting. You're the thief, spitting lies. I got you. Touch me and you'll be regretting it in the short few moments before you die. The man glances at you, eyes narrow. Suddenly he attacks. Meet his attack. Ow, he did shoot me. Give me my money. Well, Morty, I don't know what that was about. But... There's a man named Ratbone. This man is whistling a cheerful tune and playing with a well-kept fighting knight. As you approach him, he stops whistling and gives you a curious look. What? What you want? Ask some questions. My name is Ratbone, Cutter. I'm a thief for hire and the employ of Sharegrave, the boss of the collectors you see around this uh, square. He pays me uh, mostly to learn his lads to be real quiet-like and how to fight if they run into a spot of trouble. That's like the only question I'll answer for you, Mr. Cutter. All right, I'm looking for a man named Farad. Do you know where he is? Ratbone shakes his head. Nah, I don't. Here he's nearby, though. Some of his lads come running through at times, making for some hidey hole that's who knows where. Somewhere up around those elevated platforms, I'll bet, but it's none of me business. He shrugs and spits on the ground. Live and let live, says Ratbone. Where's your boss, Sharegrave? Sorry, I got it. Got a, got a, got a message. Okay, he nods towards a large, lapidated house beside him. Careful, though, Cutter. He don't like visitors. He's right suspicious of everyone. Sugar is not even his real name. Just what me and the others calls him. Okay, that's all I wish to know. Farewell. I will come back to uh, examine Sugar's place, but first, let's continue onward. Nod. As you approach. The hooded, brown-robed man, you notice he's mumbling to himself softly and occasionally nodding. Someone comes to speak to Nod, speak to Nod, I. He suddenly breaks into a fit of hacking coughs, then nods to himself. What are you doing? Nothing, except looking for debtors, nothing else. He sniffs, then gives another hacking cough. He mumbles for a moment, then speaks again, nothing else. Need the jink, jink, jink. What you look, why, why are you looking for corpses? He starts nodding without really looking at you. Haul him to the black place, the mortuary. He, pick, he tilts his head back and forth and nods again. There, the dusties, they haggles and gives jink. Then they takes the dead or in, they do. Aye. And nod don't talks to them till they till the next body. He sniffs, wiping at his nose with the back of his hand. Why do they pay for the corpses? No matter, no matter. He smiles, then nods sagely. Jink for me, jink, jink. Uh, what is this place? He frowns and licks his lips. Rag picker square, the square. Trash everywhere, I everywhere, he coughs. Uh, some questions. He nods. What? He sniffs and squints at you. Jink. He taps his head, points to you, then points to his hand. He wants to know something? Jink. Aye, jink, jink. Hand him a couple of coins. Jink for Nod. Jink, jink. He mumbles in a moment, hiding the copper coins away in the folds of his robes. As Nod tries to answer, aye. He coughs for a bit, spitting something off to the side. Do you know of a man named Farad? He looks frightened and starts to shake his head. Farad, Farad, Farad. He scratches his head. What? What about him? He frowns, then shakes his head as if he's not sure he should be speaking to you. Do you know where I can find him? He shakes his head, then mumbles. He glances quickly at you, then begins to murmur again to himself. 
It sounds like he's uttering a prayer against evil. No, 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 not here in the square. He frowns as if unsure how to explain it. But not in the square. He shakes his head again, then coughs. Uh, I'm looking for a journal that I've lost. No, 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 no journal. Okay, um... Alright, that's all I wish to know. You'd ask not a question, now I'd ask ye a question for you, I Go ahead and ask your question. Not as a sister, I. Amercy, Amercy, lives in the hive, away from here. I think I've seen her. So long ago, Nod was separated from sister, I. You've been separated from her, and you'd like to, me to find her? Updated my journal. You don't know her? He shakes his head sadly for a moment, chewing his lower lip. If you sees her, if you does, tell her Nod, her brother, worries about her, I. He does, okay. I, I'll do that for you. Nod thanks you, he does. Nod thanks you. Amaris was pretty, so pretty, lives on the hive now. Fair skinned she was. Hair like jet and always in blue. Blue, she was always in blue. But, uh, uh, she's over journal. by uh, the uh, the Burning Man. What What the hell? Oh, I accidentally hit the wrong thing. That was area location. Yeah, she's over by the Smoldering Corpse. Alright. What do we got here? We got Old Mebeth. This squat old woman looks like she has had all the color bled out of her. Everything from her hair to her shawl to her robe. All are shades of gray. The only splotches of color on her come from several strange herbs, which are tied to her belt by their stalks. The herbs make a strange swish when she moves, like a broom. Greetings. The elderly woman turns and stares at you, and you notice the gray shades blanketing her body extend to her features as well. Her hair is a wispy gray, and her eyes are like chips of granite. She frowns when she sees you. And who might you be, hmm? I'm a traveler. I don't know who I am. So you not so you not know yourself, child. She squints and points at your chest. Hard to piece together the man beneath all that tracery and scrawling scar, is it? Maybe. Who are you? With a sly cackle, she wags her eyebrows. Have you not heard of old Mebeth, then? The midwife of the square? Have you not now? She narrows her eyes and her voice drops. Well, now you have, for I be Mebeth. You're a midwife? Updated you my do? journal. I set bones right, drive the cough out of the sick, yank out squealing stubborn babes, mend cloaks, or, or a rag or two, make cures and herbs and other such. She squints at you, studying your scars. Be needing a cure or three, do you then? Cures? Aye. Be needing some cures to look at you. Do you want to buy some, do you? She glances at the scars covering your body again and shrugs. Too late to be asking for them, I think. Um, could I see what you have? So she does sell a bunch of stuff. And she does buy bronze blade bracelet. And she buys bronze rings. Awesome. I can offload all this. And I saw that Morte still had some stuff on him. Yeah, that works. Done. Hey, can can we rest here? Can I rest here? She nods, of course, child. I have a mess of blankets in the corner that would serve. That'll be good for me, thanks. And yay, resting. Get our health back. Is there anything else you can do? Um, I'm missing a journal. Do you know where I can, one can be found? Mebeth thinks, haven't seen one if it's in the square, which I doubt since folks don't traffic much with books and the like. It's most likely been sold or stolen. Was it something important to you? A magic thingy all glowing and sparkling with magic? Yeah, if so, you might never see it again. Maybe not. I have other questions. Are you a witch, Mebeth? Mebeth scrutinizes you. I say not as to what I am and isn't, but what you'd be wanting to know is so fool bad that you hound an old woman barking and sniffing for a juicy bit of gothic. So, I want to learn about magic. Could you teach me? Mebeth laughs. Pa, I'm no teacher, no school mistress. I'll set up to teach like them in the big fest hall. There's others somewhere I'm sure that'd spill the dark of it. You'd be wasting your time with old Mebeth, so you would. I don't agree. I think you'd have a lot to teach. Mebeth looks at you intently. Oh, why? Why do you want to learn such things? Because I may need to solve it. 
and need it to solve the mystery of who I am. After a moment, Mebeth nods. Dart may help, it may not, and you may, must not rely on it to solve all your problems. She sighs. Child is most only like only going to add another chip onto your pile of questions. Will you teach me? Pah! Mebeth shakes her head. One should make some songs rather than make magic. Songs have more beauty. Magic's made dull, commonplace, soiled by the mob of people that have tromped through it. Humph! She squints at you. I'll teach you, but first you need to do some things for me. You hear? Like what? My legs aren't good for walking about sigil, and there's errands I'd have you run. I need you to fetch me some herbs from the market. It's spireward, easterly and southerly from here, in the hive market. Here's a sample. She takes a black seed from her coat and flicks it to you. Examine the seed. Updated my journal. You twist the black seed in your hand. As you do, you feel a small bite, then a small drop of blood oozes from your thumb. There are tiny barbs on the seed, like teeth. Mebeth snorts. Careful with it. Show it to one of the fruit merchants at the market. They'll know what herbs you seek. All right. Well, I'm going to go do this so I can get uh, training in, 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 in wizardry. All right. Got to come up here so I can leave. All right. And the market's down here. Uh. Hey, we're being watched, Chief. Just look natural. Uh, Are we? Casual. The old woman gives you a gummy smile, some fish, no thanks. How about you? Alright, this is not what I need, but it's nice to look. What does the Whispering Flask do? Oh, okay. <laughs> Gives plus two to strength and aid. Gives Coral, this is the guy that has um, cloth. This older merchant has a worldly look to him. He is uh, deep voice gentle but confident. Ah, hello there. Are you uh, ready to sample some of the most delectable treats from across the plains? Mebeth, the midwife of the square, needs some herbs sprung from the seed here. Can you help me? The man takes a seed, looks at it critically. As he presses it between his thumb and forefinger, he winces and a small drop of blood appears on his thumb. Ah, the seed's got a bite on it. I noticed that. Do you have the herbs she's talking about? He can't seem to take his eye off the seed. Lad, I don't know if there's anyone who has what your friend seeks. To be square, I've never seen such a seed before. You would need someone who cultivates such seeds as this, for I have none. Where Updated would I find such my person? journal. Uh, don't know the dark of that, my friend. You'd be hard pressed to find a gardener in the hive. I do know. Maybe more for trees could help. Yes. All right. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, I, I need to go that direction anyway, don't I? Um. Yeah. Try the southeastern portion of the hive. It's down here. All right. First of all, right. let's get Tresseth. She should be down this way, if I remember right. No, Amaris. There we go. You see a young woman dressed in a tight leather bodice and leggings. She smells faintly of cheap perfume, and her face, though pretty, is painted with garish makeup. She smiles coyly as she sees you, seeking some company love. Are you by any chance, Amaris? She stares at you silently for a moment, then speaks. I was called that once long ago. Who are you? I was sent to find you by Nod, your brother. He's worried about you and hoped I could tell him, him how you were. Nod? He's alive? Where? Why didn't he come to seek me out himself? I think he's ashamed. He's a collector now, living in poverty in Rab Picker Square. He doesn't seem quite right in the head, I Updated mean. Updated my journal. Aye, he was a bit touched, even as a child, when his name was Thoris. Oh, I've missed him so. Ashamed, though? Ha, my own work's no more proud. Ah, well, at least I'll... I'm doing well for myself, for a hiver at any rate, huh? I must visit him soon. She looks to you closely for the first time since you've spoken. Are you a friend of Nod's, or of a sort? Why? Could you? She frowns, biting her lip as if considering something. Could you give this to him? She steps close to you and offers a pouch of what looks to be out a hundred gold, a uh, hundred copper, copper commons. Yes, I'll get it to him. Uh, 
But could I get you to swear it to me? A lot of copper it is, for me at least. I swear Updated to get my journal. She hands you the pouch. I thank you. Go speak to Nod for me and tell him uh, I worry about him so. So now we can continue along the way. Come up here to the trees, dude. Mourns for trees. There we go. Hello again, friend. I have some questions. I need some herbs sprung from this seed. Can you help me? Mourns for trees takes the seed from you and holds it up to his eye. What an odd seed. Are those teeth along the edge? Barbs, perhaps. Where did you come by it, friend? Old Mebeth, the midwife of the square, needs some herbs sprung from the seed. Do you know where I could get some? No. Mourns for trees continues to stare at the seed in his hand. This is the only seed of its kind I've ever seen. I, uh, ah, he winces, and a spot of blood glistens on his thumb. The barbs on it are sharp, indeed. Perhaps you should hold it, so you can't help me either. Unless you can make that one grow, I cannot. Again, I've never seen a scene of its life before. Is there any way to make it grow faster? Uh, Mourn for Trees looks at the seed. Perhaps if you cared enough to see it grow. Uh, focus on the seed. Will it to grow. To your surprise, there's a crack and the seed splits. Twigs splitting from its surface like fingers. Instinctively, you drop the seed, but the talon like twigs wrap around your wrist and will not let go. Updated my journal. Mourn for Trees stares at the barbed branches wrapped around your wrist, stunned. I think the barbs on the new branches would be more than enough for what your friend needs. I hope she can get this damn thing off me. Uh, I'll return to her then. Thank you for your help. Farewell. Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna go up here. Because I'm still looking for... Uh... Is it in here? No. I'm gone. Now I'm near the mortuary, what I, I could do is look for... Uh... For that one house, I guess. Wait, was that somebody? No. I'm gone. That's... I I appreciate Anna's theme, but um, I still can't I still can't get her in the party just yet. There's the mortuary. There's Shalandra. All right. There should be the portal. I was uh, the person that initially gave me the box is nowhere to be seen. Let's go to the northwest portion of the island. Hold on. Um. Let's go back up here. I'm gone. We need to get back to where we were at Mebeth's. Actually, I'll talk to Nod first. Here you go. Someone uh, comes to speak to Nod. Speak to Nod, I. He suddenly breaks into a fit of uh, hacking coughs and nods to himself. I spoke to your sister, Amaris. You did? Nod's so happy he is. How's Nod's sister? Tell him of Amaris. Tell Nod, please. The excitement sets off a long series of hacking coughs. When he can finally speak again, he asks, Is Nod's sister still pretty? So pretty? Yes, she is. She's a prostitute now in the hive. She's doing well and is worried for you. Nod's so pleased to know, to know his sister's all right. He looks as if he's going to cry for a moment, then swallows hard. Anything more? Anything more? She said to Nod for here. If she wanted to have you these copper commons, she will also visit you as soon as she can find the time. Updated my journal. Nod's head stops nodding abruptly, and his jaw drops as you hand him the 100 coins. Beneath the dirt brown hood, his eyes gleam with joy. 
Such wonderful news it is. Good, wonderful news. I not thanks ye, and thanks ye again, and thanks ye a thousand times more. Glad I could help. Very well. Getting that experience. Old Meveth, I returned with these herbs you wanted. Now maybe if you can get this damn old branch patch off of my wrist. Is that so? Meveth glances at the barbs that surround your wrist. If so, think it off then. Updated my journal. Creaking and snapping, the black barbed branches unravel themselves from your wrist and form into a tangled ball of brush and twigs. It looks like a nest of dead black snakes. Meveth snorts. Think it into a picture frame or some such. Something with more structure and less angles. Concentrate on the barbed ball, but imagine it is a picture frame. The branched ball creaks, the twigs bending and twisting until the branches have bent themselves in a small picture frame. Two hand spans on a side. Almost unconsciously, you imagine shape the barbs to the back of the frame so it can be hung from the wall easily. And as an afterthought, you move the remaining barbs to the inside of the frame so it can be picked up by the edges. How's that? Mebeth stares at the frame for a long moment and then cackles. Ha! Huh, square enough it is. Good work, child. Good work. She picks up the frame and scrutinizes it. This'll do nicely. Is this all you wanted it for? Aye, well, this is enough. She sniffs. Aye, but there was one thing I forgot to tell you to fetch when you left last time. And it'll take you back to the merchant square, it will. Look for the cloth seller, Giscoro. He has some rags of mine that he was supposed to wash, and long has it been since I first asked him to do it. Uh, I could have mentioned it uh, before I left. All right, I'll be right back. Get the apprentice quests here going so that I can actually learn what I need to learn. But I think she's, like, teaching me on the job, basically. And I'm okay right. with that. Should be down here. Done. Let me look in here real quick. Alright, that's fine. Done. Kiss Coral. Kiss Coral turns to you. I, Kiss Coral, he bows and spreads his hands. I, Kiss Coral. All right. Um, I'm here to pick up someone's wash. Mebeth, the midwife, Ragpicker Square. Kiss Coral blinks. Washcloth? Yes, Mebeth, Ragpicker Square. At yeah, Ragpicker, he taps his fingers to counting something. I know, I remember. He holds up a trembling finger as if telling you to wait. He comes back with a flattened mass of green rags, thin as paper, yet so stiff they look like they could double as wooden boards. The rags are so caked with greenish lime starch that they look like it would take years of soaking to relax them. How many times did you clean these? Because girl wash cloth, starch cloth, every fifth day. Wash cloth, starch cloth, every fifth day. His eyes flicker. Because girl wash m uh, many years, always starch cloth on fifth day. Because girl's ritual. But they're ruined. Wash cloth is because girl's ritual. His voice is flat, almost zombie-like. Must starch cloth every fifth day. What's the point of doing it every five days when they don't need... Oh, never mind. Just hand them over. Is that why his hands are like that? Give cloth, he nods and hands you the rags. They're heavy. It's like carrying an armload of bricks. Can't run while I'm carrying all this. Can't run uh, while I'm carrying... I'm can't run while I'm carrying all this. It weighs 15. Here, you carry this. The skull can carry it. Let's get, um, get this back. Oh. Enemy sighted again? Didn't I already kill you guys? Alright. There we go. Oh wait, still got one. My bad. Got it. Just going back and forth here. I'm gone. Let's go back in the Mebeth. 
All right. Mammoth seems lost in twisting the black branch picture frame you made for her. She is squaring the edges and snapping off some of the barbed seeds on the branches. She suddenly notices you and sets down the frame. Hi, child. I brought your wash. I think Giscoral was a little heavy on the cleaning ritual, though. She takes the stacks of starch green rags from you and she examines them critically. At least they won't tear, she sighs, or bend. What was with that cloth merchant, Giscoral? His hands are all scarred and he seems slow. Mebeth is still turning the cloth over in her hands, tapping it with her finger. Well, child, sometimes one burns with the art. Other times, the art burns ye. Is that what happened to him? Mebeth clicks her tongue. Mayhap. There's sums for who using the arts like breathing. They strolls round with pointy hats and stinkweed pipes. Huh. <laughs> good, good elements to reference. Then there's the hedge wizards and plain touch gypsies and fortune casters and half seers and midwives who flicker with the art. Them have a harder time of it. And Giscoral was one of them. Mebeth nods. I, so to speak. In some ways, he's no different now than he was. Addicted to habit and ritual, he was. She sets down the stiff rags. They clunk as he, she places them on the floor. I now. There's one last thing I need from your child. Of course. What do you need? Only this. I need some inks for scribing some ingredients in one of my cookery books. I need you to fetch some from the merchants. Uh, Koshija to uh, be her name. Uh, I'll... All right. I'm off. Updated my journal. Yeah. I, I've seen her. I think that's the fish woman, isn't it? Done. Run right on back. I want to get this quest out of the way. I may have to wrap Boy. it up afterwards, but I will absolutely try to get this quest out of the way first. I'm gone. Koshicha! The old woman gives you a gummy smile, some fish. Mebeth said you sell ink. She sent me to purchase some. Ink, she chuckles. Nay, sir, I sell no ink. I sell just fish. Are you sure? Mebeth, the midwife of Ragfigger Square, mentioned you specifically. What? Well, Koshija was my dam's name and my grandma's name, so it could be any of those. Yet they're both in the dead books. Only this Koshija matters. No idea what she's on about. A midwife in the Picker Square, you say? She thinks for a moment. Don't know or I don't know. So you don't have any ink? Well, I can't say it's much of a surprise. I swear I'm just having you run all in circles. Now hold on. Your midwife friend's not all wrong. I know how you can get ink, but it may not be the ink you're looking for. The ink I'm thinking of bleeds from the gills of a brogdofin it does. This brogdofin, it bleeds ink. She frowns. Aye, the thing is that fish is not for eating. It's got a horrible taste. Scalds the tongue. You can ask Miriam. She pitches her fish cell down the street in a southerly way. She cackles. She might have one of them fish for you on her pole. Updated crop. my journal. Or you talked to her before. Miriam. Have you heard of a brogtofin? I was told it bleeds ink from its gills. She blinks, then nods. Aye, that fish. That fish is a strange one it is. Not many have heard of it unless want to eat it. Difficult to kill, and even in death it seems to live. Not many want to latch their teeth around something that still rides. Do you have Updated one? Updated my journal. Aye, but the ink, you'll be nuts that needs something to carry it. Have you a bowl or a cup for chance? Or a tanker? Maybe one of the merchants is selling one. Okay, I can go back to find a tanker. Are you selling a tanker? No. Although, wait. Yeah. Let me go ahead and clear up that. Yeah. What are you selling? Yeah, you got jugs. I sell plates, cups, jugs, tankers, etc. I need something to hold ink in. Do you have a tankard or goblet for sale? Oh yes, many kinds. They range in price from a few coppers to several hundred. I'm actually looking for the cheapest one you have. She raises an eyebrow. She reaches into a crate at her side and throws a battered looking tankard at you. It's covered in dents and his handle looks like it's about to fall off. This looks like it was used on someone's skull. She smiles slightly. That'll do. Thanks. Oh, very well. <laughs> That'll work. I bought a tankard. Can I get the uh, ink from the fish on it? She nods and plucks the fish from her pole. It twitches as she grabs it, then starts lashing about as she begins to twist it like a rag. She wrings it until bluish-black ichor begins to trickle from the fish's gills. When your tankard is almost full, she relaxes her grip and throws the twitching fish into a sack on her side. Updated my journal. Just go 
going back and forth here. Come on, don't. Oh, god damn it. You guys again? What the hell? It's just over and over again with these guys. All right. Done. All right, let's go to, back to Mabeth. And talk to Mabeth. Mebeth is tugging at the mass of greenish lime starch rags you brought from Giscoral, and she seems to be purposely fraying the edges, as if to peel them apart somehow. When she hears you approach, she turns. Hi, child. Here's that ink you wanted. Mebeth takes the tankard of ink from you, then sniffs it. Prime ink. Fresh it is. Aye. She looks at you. You've done well, child. All I've asked. Now I ask again. After all you've seen, do you still want to learn the art? After all, the guiding goal of your errands was to test my persistence, was it not? Mabeth smiles and nods. Yes, mayhap, child, yes. And that's not all. You knew who I had to see to accomplish each and error, Aaron, didn't you? Mabeth nods again, slower this time. Mayhap, child, mayhap. Uh, if and so, what do your senses tell you about them? Morns for trees showed me that my beliefs affect the world around me. This girl taught me that ritual is a wasted effort if the purpose of the ritual is ignored. Miram taught me that no matter how much I think I know, there is still much I can learn from another's eyes. Mabeth is silent for a moment, and then she walks slowly over to you and touches your cheek. Oh, child, she sighs. You will be a master sorcerer one day, you will. You have the knowing of it, yet you've come to old Mebeth for help you have. What could a mid midwife t t teach one such a, such a one? Much, Mebeth. I want to learn all you have to teach. So you'll walk the path, then. Mebeth pauses. Well, first things first. Just having the knack for the art ain't enough. You need some means of giving it focus. Usually spells. The spells are usually in a book, so the art demands you have a spell book or it's like before you can cast spells. Can you read? Uh, I, yeah, I, I think so. Then let's test it. Can you read this? Mabeth draws forth a small tattered card. Looks like a recipe. The writing on the recipe swims before your eyes, each symbol twisting out of focus whenever you try to read it. Almost instinctively, you relax your eyes, allowing them to take in the page all at once, and the symbols suddenly bleed together. The recipe lists measurements, ingredients, and it appears to be some minor divination. Some minor divination, isn't it? It looks like it. it's a spell that allows the user to see the nature of an item, see whether it's enchanted or not. Mabeth's eyes widen. Who are you to test old Mavis? So are you some fiend? What what's wrong? Updated my job. Well, not expecting it was I. She looks at the recipe, then plucks it out of your hand. What you see, it's written in the language of the art. If you're not a mageling yet, it should be a, a all swirl a jumble a mishmash. She snaps her finger. Yet clear as crystal, you pluck the sense of it right up. Maybe you can tell a Mavis why is that? I don't really know, I just knew what it said. I think I may have known once, but forgot. Seeing the symbols just jarred my memory. Or else a natural gift you have. No matter, no matter. You've just saved saved seasons off your learning you have. Mabeth harumps. And I've been looking for someone to handle the chores around here I had. Maybe it's just as... If you, if you need any help or anything around here, you can still ask. It's the least I can do in exchange for you teaching me. No, no, don't worry yourself about it. She frowns. Well, you can read spells well enough, but spells are no good to you without a book to put them in. Do you have one? Mabeth glanced glance around the hut, then she catches sight of a, a black barred, the black, black barred picture frame you made. She picks it up and carefully studies it. This'll do. This thing is just a frame. Aye, but so are ye, child. She's still holding the frame. She picks up one of the greenish starch rags you got from your squirrel. With the yank, she pulls off the greenish uh, starch surface firm. It flutters in the air like a wispy bit of cloth. Whatever your squirrel uses in the wash, it works better than curing, stretching, and stoning does to a normal rag. Can't afford parchment, I can't. Parchment? She takes the starch, starchy film and pulls it over the black barbed frame, latching the rag's edges into the hooks around the frame until it looks like a small greenish-black uh, painter's canvas. It's missing something. Well, it needs something printed, painted on it. She nods. I are written on it. She takes the tankard of ink you've given her and sets it down next to her. She dips one of her fingernails in the tankard, draws it out, mumbling to herself. She begins to scratch symbols onto the frame one by one, still mumbling to herself. All's done. Mabeth stands, drying her ink-stained fingernail on her robe. She tilts her head, regarding the strange framed page in front of her. A page for your spellbook it is. She indicates you should pick it up. Take it. Inside your spellbook are your recipes, your spells, if you will. As long as they sit in the book, though, they're just words. She taps her head. 
the art demands you pluck the magic out of the book and put them in your attic, your head, before you go take and uh, can tap their power. You put them in your little attic by studying them, memorizing them. You usually need to rest before you can do this, though. Any questions? Uh, I think I understand the bit. The, I know both. Oh, no questions, eh? Well, now you should have questions. You know all about how to memorize spells, do you? You're a sharp one. You sure don't need any more of Mebeth's words, like all gobbling up your precious time. You're a master sorcerer already. Forgive me, Mebeth. I meant no questions on what you'd said. Please explain how to memorize spells. <laughs> huh. All right, then. Here's the dark of how you memorize the spells. Pick the spells you want to stick in your head from your spellbook before you go to sleep. When you wake up in the morning, they'll be buzzing in your head like flies, ready to be let out. How many spells can I cast? You can cast only one. Mayhap two spells before needing to rest again as a tiny flitting mageling. There isn't much room in your attic. So use your spells wisely until you get wiser in the art. And your power increases, you'll get more room in your attic for spells. All right, go on. You can only cast spells you memorize. So if you want to use the art to say mend something twice, and you memorize a spell how many times? Twice. Meredith nods. Aye, twice, right enough. Think I get more spells? Okay, Updated I get more spells? my journal. Keep your eyes and ears out for learning. Even common folks may have minor magics to teach. There's also scrolls, recipes, books, and even some stranger items that have spells inscribed on them. If you find them, just examine it close and copy it into your book if you want it. Got it. I can also show you more spells if you return, especially when you're a little bit more in the plains than you. I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Before you go, child, you'll need some magics for you to whet your appetite. Mebeth rummages in her robes and then pulls forth three small recipes, which she passes to you. Just copy these into your book so they can go in your attic as soon as possible. Updated my journal. Wait, there's more. <laughs> Wait, there's more. Mebeth fishes out a tiny bundle of black cloth from her apron and unrolls it, producing a, a pair of amber earrings. These will protect you on your travels, child. I no longer wear them myself, so go ahead and take them. Thanks again. All right, child, don't tear here any longer. One such as ye has other ways to spend one time rather than hang around old Mebeth. Uh, now come on, Mebeth. You're not old. Pah, you flatterer. Your tongue's still lined with silver. It'd be a shame. It'd be a shame of Batazoo. Get your hints. Thanks for everything, Mebeth. You can thank me by not playing the Addle Cove with what you've learned. The arts damn many a fool who sought to bend the ways the art meant were, weren't meant to bend. Can I get along with you? I this? feel stronger. Alright. Uh, I have to get some stuff. Get this. I'll take the stiletto and pass it along. Alright. I'm a mage. Uh, let's go ahead and put these in the book. Get identify in the book. Copy the spell. Uh, get blood. Oh, you know what? I just realized I can fail that, can't I? What's my intelligence? Seventeen. Yeah, I can fail it. I'm gonna quick save the game now before I try to describe anything else. Um, a blood bridge uh, allows the caster to share a portion of his life, so it's like a healing range. Chromatic orb. All right, aren't there? Don't I have additional scrolls? Armor, fist of iron. All right, and scroll of armor. These give plus two to AC and allow you to memorize two additional first level mage spells. I will be memorizing. I'll be taking that. Um, don't need that. So that's actually very nice. Very nice. So I I've got the green steel dagger as my only weapon now, because I'm on I'm on mage time now. All right. So let's memorize spells. I will memorize armor, fist of iron, and chromatical, and identify. And let's see about resting. Let's see if Memphis will let, let me rest here. All right, so I get my spells. Oh, you know what I should have done is I should have memorized his spells too. Grow strong. 
Oh, can I can I learn spells from deck deck on stuff? Maybe some other time. For now, I'm a mage. This has been the RPG Crawler with Planescape Torment. Until next time, take care and goodbye. And if you are still watching, I would like to take the opportunity to thank my supporters, the top tiers of which are listed on the screen, without whose support I would not have been able to offer the variety of content that I have on this channel throughout the years. If you're feeling particularly generous and would like to join them, you can support the channel. There are a variety of options to do so. I have a Patreon, a Subscribestar, as well as channel memberships enabled. If you are not in a position to contribute, simply leaving a like, a comment, or sharing my videos are all wonderful ways to help the channel grow without spending a dime and are all greatly appreciated.